Welcome to the Association for Conservation Information Award Ceremony. Celebrating and honoring outstanding conservation communicators from around the country. Please welcome ACI Awards Co-Chair, Blake Podaski. Hello, my name is Blake Podaski and I'm with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. I'm the ACI Co-Chair this year and I'm co-chaired this year by my friend and colleague from Nevada Department of Wildlife, Aaron Meyer. And naturally, we would rather be given this awards presentation in person at the conference in Santa Fe, New Mexico, but instead, I guess we're gonna have to do it from our living rooms and my living room here in Oklahoma City, but that's okay, because we have a great show for you tonight. But before we get on to the award ceremony, I do have a couple things I do wanna go over. Immediately following the awards, we're gonna have a Zoom call. Our good friends from host state New Mexico had the brilliant idea to have a Zoom call uh, social hour, if you will, where we can call in and we can see each other and we can say hello and, have, and uh, have conversations and say congratulations to all the award winners. So please, please call in on the Zoom call afterwards. Also, this is a, a YouTube live event and so we do have real time uh, commenting. So if you know how to do that and if you're able to, Please uh, leave a comment or two, say hello to your ACI friends, or say congratulations to the award winners as we go throughout the night. And finally, if you're an entrant, or if you were a judge, or maybe you, you don't even have a, a horse in the race, I encourage you to watch the entire presentation, as I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So without further ado, let's get on to the award ceremony. Grab some popcorn, your favorite beverage, put up your feet, and enjoy the show. Hi from Nevada. Hi. 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 From Utah. Hello from Iowa, ACI. Can't wait to see you all again. Stay safe, stay healthy. Hi, this is Tom Dixon. I'm the editor of Montana Outdoors. I just want to say hi to all my fellow state conservation magazine editors out there and i also want to wish everyone who submitted uh, to this year's aci competition the best of luck aloha from sunny honolulu hawaii hey aci folks this is amanda from florida fish and wildlife conservation commission and hope you guys are having a good year and we miss you Missing all my ACI friends. We'll see you next year. Hello from Colorado Parks and Wildlife. I just wanted to spin in a chair so that it would make life really hard for Blake when he edited together this video. Hi from Joanne and the whole RBFF team. Hello from Missouri, where every day is a great day to get out and discover nature. Hello from outdoor Oklahoma. Hello, I'm Craig Springer with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I'm a fish biologist. New Mexico and I'm about probably 30 air miles from our would-be conference site. Give me an NYS! Give me a DEC! New York State Department of Environmental Conservation where we care about the environment. Greetings from the Ohio Division of Wildlife on the north shores of Lake Erie. From the banks of the beautiful Ohio River in the south. And everything in between. Take care from O O A I O. We hope to see you face to face in 2021. Bye. Bye. Tighten up. There's a pheasant. 
Hello from Oregon. I miss seeing all you guys this year, but uh, also my horse is sad because she doesn't get a vacation. Hopefully we'll see you next year. Hi everybody, Kelly Adams from Oklahoma. I can't wait to see you guys next year. I hope you stay happy and healthy. Heidi. Amanda. Michael. Melissa. Aubrey. Lacey. Rick. Beth. We're, We're Georgia Wildlife Resources. Hey guys, my name is Steve Wildman Wilson. I worked for the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission for 37 and a half years and attended ACI for probably 20 years in a row. Great organization. And uh, I can't talk much longer because I got a little business to take care of, guys, if you know what I'm talking about. Hey, y'all have a great meeting. Thanks to all of you ACI members who entered our contests. In my eyes, all of you are winners. So enjoy the show and good luck. Please welcome ACI President, Jennifer Wisniewski. Hi, and welcome everyone to the 2020 Association for Conservation Information Awards Night. Um, we are doing this virtually for the first time, and I'm here to welcome you. I'm Jennifer Wisniewski. I'm the current president of ACI and uh, the chief of outreach and communications for the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Um, and, you know, these are some crazy times we're going through, and I, I just hope that everybody's staying sane and uh, uh, we're in for an enjoyable night. And I hope you'll join us all in the social hour that's immediately following this. Um, but, you know, there's a little silver lining to these crazy times and that's that people are rediscovering the outdoors and uh, going back to those traditions of hunting and fishing like, like they did so many years ago. So um, if there's a bright spot in all this, it's that. And, um, you know, I've, I, I realize that these are difficult times, but um, we as ACI are here to support you. And if there's anything that you would like to see in this organization, we're more than willing to know how we can help. So uh, we're here for you. And if you haven't noticed or seen, there's a lot of great shareable campaigns out there uh, that you can take advantage of from Making It Last, if you're not aware of that, makingitlast.org, check it out, uh, great relevancy campaign, and there's also hashtag I am fair chase that Arizona has shared with everyone this year that's a fantastic idea for a campaign and very timely, as well as hashtag responsible recreation. So there's some really great resources out there, so if you're banging your head against the wall to try to come up with some content that just know that it's already out there for you to share. Um, and the balance wheel. Uh, if you're not reading the balance wheel uh, quarterly as it comes out, you should be. And if you don't know how to sign up for it, go to our website. That's aci-net.org and uh, you can sign up to get it. And thank you Scott Ball for making that happen quarterly. We appreciate that. There's some great information in there every time. I, it's like little nuggets of good things. So I hope you all read it. Um, so, I don't know if everybody's aware of this, but ACI is really poised to take a bigger role in the R3 community. That's recruitment, retention, and reactivation of hunters and anglers and target shooters. And, um, you know, I've, I'm excited to tell you that we are the recipient of some multi-state grant funding this year. So, there's um, that new money available for R3 stuff through PR Modernization Act. And ACI is going to get about $750,000 to be able to um, use to do our three work through our um, organization. So uh, stay tuned to see how you can be a beneficiary of one of those grants. Just FYI, for the current coming year, we are going to keep the slate of officers that we have. So I will get to continue being the president of ACI. And Lance Cherry from New Mexico will continue on as vice president. And Sarah DiRienzo from Wyoming will continue on as secretary. And of course, the illustrious Judy will stay our treasurer. Um, and let's see, what else do we have on our list? I think that's all the business. So, well, um, you know, ACI is really about the kinship of communicators that we have here. And I know that we'll get through this together. And even though we don't get to see each other this year, we'll see you in Santa Fe next year. Um, and know that our agencies are depending on us. And 
the creativity that we use as communicators continues to amaze me and you know I hope that you'll continue to reach out to each other um, and use the technology available to us to uh, stay connected and uh, without any further ado welcome to awards night um, I'm anticipating some cool stuff tonight. I know Blake will uh, not disappoint, and uh, I'm excited to see the new categories most of all. So, hope everybody enjoys tonight, and I'll see you at the social hour afterwards. And now, tonight's feature presentation the ACI Awards. Good evening. I'm Aaron Meyer with the Nevada Department of Wildlife. I am the awards co-chair with Blake, and I'm also a category chair for both the photography and the graphic design categories. Uh, first off, I just want to thank everybody that entered. The, even during the pandemic, we still got several hundred entries, and that was, that was pretty amazing. Uh, most of all, I want to thank all the people that volunteered to judge all of the hundreds of entries that we got. Uh, without you guys, we couldn't do this. Hold on a second. I'm making a video, guys. Come on. Sorry, guys. Uh, that being said, I'm going to start reading. Let's kick this awards off with our graphics design categories. The first category of the night is graphics advertising display. This is for designs such as ads, web banners, exhibit graphics, and billboards. And here are your winners. Third place for graphics, advertising display. It's a tie. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Marine Hatchery Vertical Banners, and Wyoming Game and Fish Department, Wyoming Outdoor Expo Print Ad. Second place. Wyoming Game and Fish Department, Aquatic Invasive Species Advertisement. First place for graphics, advertising display, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Paddling Trail Kiosk Series. Man, that tie was super uncomfortable. Sorry, I, I wanted to be formal, but I just, I couldn't, so I had to put on some normal clothes. Uh, our next category is the graphics layout category. Eligible designs are those in which text is a significant element, such as presentation graphics, magazine articles, and infographics. Third place for graphics layout. Missouri Department of Conservation, Sarah's Guide to Birds. Second place, Missouri Department of Conservation, What's Killing My Tree? First place for graphics layout, Nebraska Game and Parks, Not Without Wetlands Infographic. category is for graphics, logo, or illustrations. Each entry consists of an original graphical element such as logos, illustrations, patches, pins, and stickers. Our winners are... Dylan. Third place for graphics, logos, illustrations. Nebraska Game and Parks. Take em Fishing Logo. Second place, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. 
Buffalo Ridge Shooting Range logo. First place for graphics, logos, illustrations. New Mexico Department of Game and Fish, New Mexico Trout Challenge logo. Aaron, Aaron, let's just get these done. We can't hear you. Sorry, my bad. Now for our photography categories. The first photography category is for photography, flora, and fauna. This is for photos of wild animals, birds, fish, insects, and other live creatures or wild plants as the main subject in a natural setting. And here are your winners. Third place for photography, flora and fauna, Utah Division of Wildlife Resources, Endangered Black-Footed Ferret, Second place, Arizona Game and Fish Commission, Glassford Hill Pronghorn Translocation. First place for photography, flora and fauna. It's a tie, both from the Missouri Department of Conservation, King Rail with Frog Lunch and Smiling Salamander. Third place for photography, scenic. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Salton Sea National Wildlife Refuge, Rock Hill View. Second place, Missouri Department of Conservation, Mineral Hills Conservation Area from above. First place for photography, scenic. Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Kayomishi River. Uh, this next category is for photography people. This awards photos where the primary subject is one or more people. He's on fire. Typically in the He's outdoors. On fire. And dad, or dad, dad, dad. In their natural dad, environment. Dad. Your winners are Dad. third place for photography people, Arizona Game and Fish Commission, Bald Eagle Release. Second place, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, South Bay Icon Florence La Riviere. First place for photography, people, Missouri Department of Conservation, duck hunting family. Babe. Babe, there's one more. What? There's one more. Are you serious? Finally, the photography studio enhanced category. This category is designated for photos captured where the photographer controls lighting or enhances the photo. Photography, studio enhanced. There were only three entries in this category, so only first place will be recognized. First place for photography, studio enhanced, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Dan Harrison and Knife.
Hello everyone, I'm Jess Brown, social media specialist with Iowa DNR. I'm also the group chair for ACI's social media categories. The first category is best social media campaign. This category recognizes a social media campaign that demonstrates a concerted communications or marketing effort using one or more social media platforms. Here are your winners. Third place for the best social media campaign, Nevada Department of Wildlife. Monitoring Mondays. Second place, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Making it last, Texas. First place, Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Oklahoma Bear Encounters. The next category is for Conservation Post of the Year. This category recognizes the best performing social media posts that either went viral, drove traffic, or generated buzz. The winners are Third place for Conservation Post of the Year, New Mexico Department of Game and Fish, Captured. Second place, South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, Flip a Crab, Save a Life. First place for Conservation Post of the Year, Utah Division of Wildlife Resources, Epic Bull Elk Rescue in Utah. Finally, the award for best social media presence. This category recognizes an agency that demonstrates the effective and quality use of social media to engage and grow an active outdoor community using various social media platforms. Here are the winners for best social media presence. Third place for the best social media presence, Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, ODWC Social Media. Second place, South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, SCDNR's social media presence. First place for the best social media presence, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks social media. Hello ACI friends, my name is Darren Hill with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation and I'm your category chair for audio and video. We had some exciting changes this year as we expanded our categories to better reflect all the great work our ACI members are creating. We will get to the video categories in a minute, but let's first recognize the winners in the audio program or podcast category. Examples include radio shows, 
radio PSAs, and podcasts. And here are your winners. Third place in the audio program or podcast category, Missouri Department of Conservation. Discover Nature Notes, Urban Fishing 50th. This is Discover Nature Notes with the Missouri Department of Conservation. 1969, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. And the St. Louis Blues were in the Stanley Cup. There was civil unrest across the nation and a rent strike in St. Louis. To ease social tensions, a national pilot program began to bring close-to-home fishing opportunities to major cities. The urban fishing program took off in St. Louis and has been growing strong for 50 years. Kansas City joined later, and both Missouri cities have improved lakes with healthy habitats that support a variety of fish. Several park lakes are stocked with catfish and sunfish in the spring and summer, and trout in the fall and winter. No matter where you live in Missouri, you can find a place to go fishing within 20 minutes of home. Discover more by signing up today at discovernaturenotes.com. The Missouri Department of Conservation, serving nature and you. Second place, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Buy your license. It's a good thing. Hi, I'm Charlie Daniels. When I was a kid, I loved baseball and football and all kind of stuff, but my favorite pastime was when my daddy would get me up early in the morning we'd go hunting or fishing. Out in the fresh air, on the water, or back in the woods, and you learn a lot. You got kids, take them hunting, take them fishing. Join me. Buy a hunting or fishing license. Let's keep wildlife in Tennessee. That's a doggone good thing. Buy your license at GoOutdoorsTennessee.com. First place in the audio program or podcast category, Missouri Department of Conservation Nature Boost Podcast. Be kind, episode two. What's your favorite food? Uh, pasta. Pasta, what about you? Uh, beef. Beef? Did you guys know that you wouldn't have either of those without the pollination from bees? Really? Bees are responsible for one and three bites of food that we take. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so bees are bees are just really, really important, and I want you to save all of them. Okay. Okay. Promise me you will. I'll try. <laughs> all right. Thank oh, you. you. Hey there, and welcome to Nature Boost the Missouri Department of Conservation podcast that brings people in nature together. I'm your host, Jill Pritchard. In our pilot episode, we talked about nature's effect on our mental and physical health. Spending time outside has shown to decrease stress and anxiety while increasing our overall happiness. For Now for our video categories. The first one is for video feature, how-to, and instructional videos. These videos consist of an instructional presentation in order to teach the viewer a new skill or to inform. The winners are... Third place for video feature, how-to instructional. Missouri Department of Conservation, living with wildlife, urban coyotes. A hollow off in the distance can conjure up an image of the western U.S. But the range of coyotes is extensive and they have long been a part of Missouri's landscape rural and urban. Seeing a coyote in your neighborhood is not necessarily a cause for alarm. In fact, coyote attacks are rare. It's best to treat them like any other wild animal that might become a nuisance. Here are some tips that help minimize the interaction with the environments we both call home. Second place, Missouri Department of Conservation. Be bear aware, hiking and camping. Based on a 2012 population estimate, we're at about 350 black bears, but we do know that population is growing and expanding. Most of our bears occur south of Interstate 44 in kind of the forested areas of the southern Ozarks. Part of having a new and expanding bear population is just the learning curve with the public within this state. There are many places where people have... First place for video feature, how-to instructional. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Skill Builder, Safe zone of fire.
Hi, I'm Heidi Rayo, Hunter Education Specialist with Texas Parks and Wildlife. Let's talk about safe zones of fire while hunting. When hunting in a group, each hunter has a safe zone of fire. This is an area where you can safely take a shot. If you shoot beyond your safe zone of fire, this could have dangerous or deadly results. It's easy to find your safe zone of fire. Start by focusing on an object ahead of you like a tree. Hold your thumbs up and slowly bring them to the side of your body until your thumbs disappear out of vision. This is about a 45 degree angle and the area where you can safely take a shot. This is your safe zone of fire. It's that easy. If you're hunting with another person, be very careful to never cross into that person's safe zone of fire. In fact, no matter how many hunters there are, even one. Next, the video feature hunting and fishing category. This recognizes hook and bullet type videos, primarily focusing on the pursuit of fish and game. And here are your winners. Third place for video feature hunting and fishing, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, My Life Outside, Brooke Benham Wright. For me, hunting is my opportunity to be intimate and connect with nature. It gives me a wonderful opportunity to escape, quite honestly, and get away from this craziness in town and work, and um, it provides a lot of peace and solitude. I love wildlife, I love getting out there and learning about them, and it's not just about hunting them, but it's... Second place, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Lionfish, from harvest to table. Because lionfish don't fear anything, they're actually extremely easy to harvest. They're not a quick moving fish. You go in with your sling, and if you have a proper way to store them, you can successfully harvest your own lionfish. Florida Fish and Wildlife has made it very, very easy for individuals to get a license that allows them to sell their catch to a licensed wholesaler. So you can sell directly to them with an SPL. You also can keep a few fish for yourself or keep all the fish, bring it to your house and have a big cookout for all your First place for video feature, hunting and fishing, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, fishing for hip hop. My dad introduced me to fishing. He was introduced to fishing from his grandfather. My father actually took me fishing when I was two years old. Yo, I'm about to go attack some trout on this beautiful Platte River. Just follow me, y'all. Come on, let's see what I can come up with. I was given a toy fishing rod with a fake fish, fake like plastic line, fake hook. My superhero is my dad, so I wanted to be like my dad when we went fishing. So my dad put real... Next, the video feature natural resources conservation category. This category is for videos focusing on natural resources, scientific stories, and research. Third place for video natural resources, Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Live in the wildlife, Colorado's wild turkeys. Second place, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Back to the Kraken. In the Gulf waters off the Texas coast, these divers are on their way to visit an artificial reef. What we're gonna see, we don't know until we get down there. It's amazing and really exciting. I get, it's like my inner nerd comes out. 
not just any reason. First place for video feature, Natural Resources. It's a tie. Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, Indiana Vets, where do they go? And Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, back to the bay. Bridgestone Firestone Wildlife Management Area is a rugged piece of property. It's also a good place to find bats. We are looking for Indiana bats. Indiana bats are an endangered species, have been listed since 1973 when the Endangered Species Act first started. I always like to classify bats in three ways. You've got strictly cave obligate bats, you've got bats that use caves and trees, and then you've got bats that are just forest bats, just use trees. So Indiana bats are one of those that a lot of people assume use caves throughout the year. Um, they spend the winter in caves and then they spend the summer out in the forest. So it depends on both types of habitat for them to survive. So what's in the bag? The bag right here is full of Indiana bats, females. Every animal in Tennessee has a place. They can be flame grilled or fresh from the bay. <laughs> Folks love their oysters. But what to do with these oyster shells after dinner? Well, there's another place besides the trash. What we're doing is helping to return oyster shells back to the bay. Oyster shells are a very easy resource to recapture from the restaurant. So why not grab those shells and put them out in the bay? In Galveston, a hands-on oyster shell recycling program is underway. Tons and tons of old oyster shells are on their way to a new home. But to tell this tale, we need to back up a little bit. It's recycling day, and Tukey's Seafood is stop number one. If the restaurants buy in on it. Now for the video feature outdoor recreation category. Videos featuring hiking, canoeing, kayaking, camping, backpacking, and other outdoor use activities qualify for this category. And here are your winners. Third place for video feature, outdoor recreation, Missouri Department of Conservation. Did hiking save the radio star? Hey, it's Jeff Burton, and I'm very, very excited. Any day is a good day when you get to hang out with the Missouri Department of Conservation and go out to one of their conservation areas. You don't have to be on the radio to do that. Go out and be active. I like to hike, I like to trail run, and it's just a great time. It's a great activity. You're being active, you're doing something good for your body and your brain. I'm Jeff Burton, born and raised in uh, Fenton, Missouri. Been in radio for a little over 30 years. I know I look super young. Second place, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Caddo Lake State Park. Well, well. You know, Caddo Lake State Park, that's the only area in Texas that you can find this environment, this habitat. There's not a lot of people out here to where it's gonna be crazy. Uh, you can really get out here and just recharge your soul. Caddo Lake State Park is the game. First place for video feature outdoor recreation, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Monahan Sand Hills State Park. The dunes change visibly. They are constantly moving, changing shape. It is the only section of this type of dune field in all of Texas. It's serene. A lot of people come here over and over for the peace and quiet that you get out here. You get away from the tracks and away from the people and it almost feels like you're the only one that's ever been here. It's a little bit surreal to be out here in the middle of the dunes that are unlike anything anywhere else in Texas or for most of the country for that matter. My name is Michael Smith. I'm a superintendent and park police officer for Monaghan Sand Hill State Park. 
We are in fall. Next is the video PSA and marketing category. Each entry consists of a standalone PSA, promotional or marketing type video production. Third place for video, PSA and marketing. Nevada Department of Wildlife. Vote Nevada. Registration has never been easier. Go to BoatNevada.us and get on the water today. Second place, Nevada Department of Wildlife. Fish Nevada. Get your fishing license at fishnevada.us in Piscard, Nevada today. First place for video, PSA and marketing. Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Thank you for your participation in sport fish restoration. For every lure we manufacture, we contribute to conservation by improving access to Florida's fresh and saltwater resources. For every purchase of fishing tackle and motorboat fuel, we fund the creation of habitat such as the artificial reefs we love to fish on. For every piece of fishing equipment purchased, we support research and stock enhancement on some of Florida's favorite species. For every license purchased, we fund angler recognition and education programs that encourage ethical angling and teach kids and adults to fish, sometimes for the first time. For every purchase of fishing tackle and motorboat fuel, funding cycles back to Florida through the Federal Sport Fish Restoration Program. This supports statewide programs that improve and enhance fishing and boating opportunities. Every license purchase. In the final video category, video reoccurring program. This category recognizes a series of episodes produced specifically for television or internet viewing and must have been produced as a part of a regularly scheduled series. And here are your winners. Third place for video, recurring program, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, Outdoor Reports. After nearly 40 years patrolling Montana's outdoors, this hunting season is Bill Copen's last as a game warden. It's been a great career, a great job, and you know a lot of people want to be a game warden, especially in Montana, and I just was fortunate to be able to do that. Whether patrolling the backcountry or running a decoy operation, the variety of the job has kept coping at it for so many years. Better? It's, it's all there. Second place, it's a tie. Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, Tennessee Outdoor Journal, and Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Texas Parks and Wildlife. Don't forget that if you're 13 years old or older, you need a license to fish in Tennessee, unless you're fishing on property that belongs to either you or your parents. Now you can purchase your license online at tnwildlife.org, your direct link to the TWRA. On this episode of Tennessee Outdoor Journal, we'll look over the shoulder of those taking part in a bat blitz and find out just how important it is. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. Here in the Texas Hill Country, biologists are keeping track of a Texas treasure. I stop in my tracks every time I hear one. Oh, there's that bird right there. Good looking little guy. The Black Cap Vireo. First place for video, recurring program, Colorado Parks and Wildlife. My first big game hunt. What's the first line? <laughs> 
Hello everyone, I'm Crystal Egley and I'm a videographer for Colorado Parks and Wildlife. My job is to create videos about all the things Colorado Parks and Wildlife does. From free fishing clinics to wildlife research and management, our schools and outdoor learning environments program, to outdoor recreation profiles. You can often find me and my camera in one of Colorado's amazing state parks, filming everything from wildlife to wildflowers. One of my favorite subjects to film is our field staff. I get to see firsthand just how dedicated they are to conservation. And I learn so much about what goes into wildlife, parks, and fisheries management each time I interview someone. I've actually seen the blood, sweat, and tears that go into their work. When I first got this job, I knew I'd have to make videos about hunting, but I wasn't too thrilled about it, to be honest. I was raised by my parents in rural Vermont, and I grew up eating lots of tofu with my hippie vegetarian dad. I didn't think I'd ever come to enjoy going on hunts, and I never, ever thought that I would someday call myself a hunter. The other thing I never thought I would do was film myself. I much prefer being behind the camera, sharing stories about our staff and people like you who are recreating in the outdoors. Being in front of the camera is as new to me as hunting, but I really feel that this journey is important enough to document. I'm nervous about it and it's definitely gonna be a bit different because I'm also filming the whole thing myself. So if you'd like to follow along as I go big game hunting for the first time, I'd love to have you. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, it's Blake again. I hope you're enjoying the show. We are halfway through the presentation, so we do have another half of awards to go. But for tonight's show, I did ask some people from around ACI to provide some behind the scenes footage or comment on some projects that they've worked on in the past, and I wanted to show them to you. Oh, hi, I <laughs> didn't see you there. My name is Crystal Egley, and I'm a videographer for Colorado Parks and Wildlife. One of the biggest projects I worked on in the last year and a half was the series My First Big Game Hunt. I spent a year and a half filming myself learning how to big game hunt for the first time. Now, there is an obvious reason why I picked myself. I wanted to show people uh, somebody who was a non-typical stereotype looking of a hunter, and I was hoping that I could kind of be a beacon for, for people to, to, to look at me and say, if she can do it, she's crazy, uh, so can I, you know? If somebody like her can go out and learn to hunt, maybe I can too. I wanted them to be able to see themselves out there. That sounds really great, doesn't it? But one of the things I quickly discovered once I was out there is that I wasn't the first. I wasn't the second. I wasn't the third. There are already a ton of people of color and women of color out there that have my exact background. You know, I'm a a liberal hippie who is terrified of firearms and yet I really um, uh, have respect for using a rifle or another firearm as a tool for sourcing my own food. I'm not the first one. There's so many people out there. You can find them on social media pretty immediately. And so my message to you would be to not believe the, the line that there aren't people of color or women of color or people in the LGBTQIA plus community or liberals who hunt. That, that isn't true. There's a ton of us out there and I don't think we're the problem for recruitment and retention and reactivation. I believe we're the solution. I would encourage you to go out there. There's a couple of handles I can give you right now. So uh, Black Duck Revival on the gram, the hunting student on the gram. Uh, if you look up hashtag we out here and hashtag diversify outdoors, you'll be able to use that as a jumping off point to find more hashtags and more accounts. Um, you can even follow me at Crystal Egley on Instagram. And uh, I'm frequently tagging and posting um, people who are in this community, which is very large nationwide. So go out there and change the world. And I don't know, what else am I supposed to say, Blake? Are you out here? What, what else am I supposed to say? I don't know. All right, I'm turning this off. Hi, I'm Don Cash with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. I'm the series producer for our television show. And yes, some people still do a television show. 
Blake wanted me to sort of show you how we were continuing to work in the pandemic time. Uh, let me tell you, things are a little different. We're not in the field as much, but everybody's got a lot of stuff to edit that was already shot. So we're staying pretty busy uh, doing a lot of video production. Um, show you around a little bit. Uh, we are editing on uh, IMAX with Adobe Premiere, fixing to change to a new version. But uh, let me show you around and introduce you to some people here. This is where Whitney Bishop sits. Whitney is our social media director, and um, I guess she's working from home right now. I'm not really sure. Over here is where Karen Loke sits. Karen is a social media producer as well, so I'm sure she's at home producing some social media. This is Abe Moore's cubicle. Uh, Abe is the show producer, and as you can see, he's taken his edit equipment home, so I'm sure he's probably editing a project uh, right now. Okay, I'm going to brag on the team a little bit. Uh, these are tellies. If you can't win an Emmy, at least win a telly. This is where Bruce Bierman used to sit. Bruce was the uh, branch chief. He retired a couple of months ago. He's probably pretty bored right now. Alan Fisher is one of the TV show producers and he's got his edit equipment home, but I believe Alan is out shooting a story as we speak. I should be wearing this mask, but it's like 100 degrees out here. I wonder what the humidity is. This story is not going to be very good. Why did I want to get into video production? This is the cubit of our newest producer, Will Dotter. Looks like his edit equipment is gone too, so I'm sure he's at home editing away. And we'll head to the back here to what we call the pit. As you can see, we've got a lot of old video tapes here left over from when people use videotape. And no, we don't edit on videotape anymore. This is where well, Ben Kaling would sit here if he was here. He's got some edit equipment home, so I'm pretty sure he's busy at work on a project as well. And Kyle Banowski sits here, but he's not here today, it looks like. Uh, Kyle became a father a few weeks ago, so I'm sure he's at home doing something really fun with the baby. Okay, Olivia, let's uh, add a little transition here to this clip. Ah, no, we don't do star wipes. Looks like not a lot of people here right now, so I'm here though, and this is sort of my room. This is one of the edit rooms that we work in, and this is where we put the show together and see if I can stand that sucker up without knocking it off. So uh, I'm stuck in here for the next six months, producing 26 shows. All the people you saw working, we'll bring all the pieces in here, we'll put it together. So we are continuing to produce. Uh, it's a team effort, as you can tell. Everybody's hard at work, so hope you enjoyed the tour. How do you turn this thing off? Hey everybody, it's Jason Harmon from Tennessee, uh, host of Tennessee Wildcast. We wanted to show you a little behind the scenes of one of our shows. We've got a nice bass boat here behind me. One of our former commissioners and foundation board members owns this uh, this boat company. As you can see behind me, we are setting up for a wild cast with him today, and it's gonna be fun. So I just wanted to show you a little bit behind the scenes uh, of what's going on. Look at this, they're making boats for fresh water, for salt water. It's an amazing operation, but we're excited to uh, show you a little behind the scenes. So uh, go watch the show once it's out. Thanks, see y'all later.
Hi, everybody. I'd like to take just a moment out of this evening to say thank you to a few people. Uh, first off, Lance Cherry, thanks so much for continuing to serve as vice president, as well as being so flexible with planning for the conference this year that moved to November, then was going to be virtual maybe, then got pushed for another year. So thank you for you and your staff's uh, flexibility and ability to adapt. Um, also to Sarah DiRienzo, who has served as our secretary um, just wonderfully and kept us in the rails by taking minutes and keeping us on track. Uh, thanks so much. And Judy Stokesweber, for your heart for ACI, uh, we absolutely thank you for continuing to serve as our treasurer and uh, keeping us honest. <laughs> and uh, tonight especially I'd like to thank Blake and Aaron, um, the awards co-chairs for this year. They've done a fantastic job with the new awards platform and new awards categories and taking our awards ceremony online. So thank you so much for everything that you do for us. Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Dorenzo and I'm coming to you tonight from Wyoming, the Cowboy State. I am your ACI Board Secretary and the Category Group Chair for the Communication and Education categories. The first category I will introduce is brand new this year, Best Use of Humor. This category recognizes the most creative and effective use of humor to enhance and amplify a communication or education effort. Here are the winners. Third place for the Best Use of Humor. Colorado Parks and Wildlife, Experience Elk Fest 2019. Second place, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, hashtag swipe sagebrush. First place for the best use of humor, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, Slippery When Wet. Next, the communication campaign category. This is for communication efforts that may use a combination of various print, digital media, or online communication engagement strategies as part of the campaign. And the winners are. Third place for communication campaign, Nevada Department of Wildlife, Boat Fish Nevada. Second place, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, R3 in Revenue Generating Communications.
first place for communication campaign, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Great Outdoor Scavenger Hunt. Now, the education category. This category is for entries that range from one-time, single-topic efforts to comprehensive programs designed for use over a number of years. And the winners are... Third place in the education category, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, shore-based, shark-smart fishing educational module. Second place in the education category, there is a tie. Georgia Department of Natural Resources, Burner Bob, and Nevada Department of Wildlife, Nevada Knockout. First place in the education category, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, R3 Educational Programs. Our next category is the external newsletter category. Each entry consists of two different issues of an external or print e-newsletter that is published on a regular schedule. Here are the winners. Third place for external newsletter, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, Fish in Tennessee. Second place, New Mexico Department of Game and Fish, New Mexico Wildlife Monthly Update. First place in the external newsletter category, Georgia Department of Natural Resources, Georgia Wild E-Newsletter. The next category is for internal communications. This category is for efforts that include print or e-newsletters, videos, brochures, manuals, or other products created to inform, educate, train, or motivate employees. Third place for internal communications, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, Director Staff Communications. Hey, thanks for taking a few minutes to meet with me today. I wanted just to go over a few items that I thought might be of interest to you, and I have about four in mind, one being the the recent meeting we had at Buffalo Ridge, which we called our Trim the Sales meeting. Then I also want to talk a little bit about Asian carp, then chronic wasting disease, then a few things that we're doing to change the structure of the biodiversity and wildlife division. So. Second place, Utah Division of Wildlife Resources, Wildlife Recreation Events Planning Internal Workflow Communication. First place for internal communications, Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Wildlife Ogram. Now for the website category. Entries may encompass an agency or organization's entire website or a special project or program specific initiative. And the winners are. Third place for best website, 
Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, Florida Python Challenge website. Second place, Utah Division of Wildlife Resources, wildlife.utah.gov. First place for best website, South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, Hurricane Hugo's 30th anniversary. I'm Amanda Stroud with South Carolina Department of Natural Resources and I'm your category chair for other printed products. This first category is calendar, either a desktop <laughs> thing spatch, desktop wall, or monthly calendar is eligible. And the winners are? Third place for best calendar, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, 2020 Texas State Fish Art Calendar. Second place, New Hampshire Fish and Game Department, 2020 New Hampshire Wildlife Calendar. First place for best calendar, Ohio Division of Wildlife, Wild Ohio Calendar. The next category is one-time publication book. Examples are cookbooks, field guides, annual reports, etc. This year's winners are? Third place for the one-time publication book report category. Missouri Department of Conservation. Basic hunting for common Missouri game species, rabbit. Second place, it's a tie. Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, Chronic Wasting Disease in Tennessee, and Wyoming Game and Fish Department, Wyoming Game and Fish Strategic Plan. First place for the one-time publication book report category, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Texas State Parks Official Guide 2019, 16th edition. Now we're on to one-time publication brochure. This includes standard brochures or rack cards. Let's see who our winners are. Third place for the one-time publication brochure, Nebraska Game and Parks, Turkey Trip Planner. Second place, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Fishing Tips for Beginners. First place for the one-time publication, Brochure, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, State Park Police Recruiting Brochure.
publication other things such as recipe cards, flyers, or invitations, our winners are... Third place for the one-time publication, Other, Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. I found a baby mammal. Now what? Second place, Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Fish Fry Invitation. First place for the one-time publication, Other, Ohio Division of Wildlife, Ohio Wildlife Legacy Stamp. The last category in other printed products is poster. Let's see who our winners are. Third place in the poster category, it's a tie. Georgia Department of Natural Resources, Retro License Plate Poster, and Missouri Department of Conservation, Invasive Species Poster, Bush Honeysuckle. Second place, Indiana Department of Natural Resources, Living with Coyotes. First place for best poster, Indiana Department of Natural Resources, Indiana Non-Game Wildlife Fund poster. Hi, I'm Tom Dixon and I'm with Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks. I'm here in my office in Helena, Montana, also known as the Queen City of the Rockies. I'm the category chair for the four magazine article categories as well as the all-around magazine category. The first magazine category is for destination historical and cultural article. These are articles that are about state parks or other sites in a state, uh, articles of a historical nature or that have a cultural theme. And tonight's winners are... Third place for best magazine, destination, historical or cultural article. Indiana Department of Natural Resources, Covered Classics, Bridges Celebrate State's Rural Culture. Second place, Wyoming Game and Fish Department, Father of the Elk. First place for best magazine, destination, historical or cultural article, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, where the West comes alive. The next category is for fisheries articles. These are articles about fishing, fisheries management, or fisheries conservation. And the top three articles in this year's competition are... Third place for best magazine fisheries article, Wyoming Game and Fish Department, Just Keep Swimming. Second place, Missouri Department of Conservation, 50 years of urban fishing in St. Louis. First place for best magazine fisheries article, Missouri Department of Conservation, striped bass in Bull Shoals Lake. The next category is for wildlife article. 
And these are articles about hunting, wildlife watching, wildlife management, or wildlife conservation. And the winners this year are... Third place for Best Magazine Wildlife Article, Wyoming Game and Fish Department, Repelling for Rosie. Second place, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Wind and Wildlife. First place for Best Magazine, Wildlife Article, Georgia Department of Natural Resources, Return to River Creek. And the final article category is for the general interest article. And these are articles that don't fit into the previous categories and are of topics of a general interest to the readers of the magazine. And the winners in this category this year are... Third place for Best Magazine General Interest Article, Missouri Department of Conservation, What's Killing My Tree? Second place, Missouri Department of Conservation, Good Medicine from the Great Outdoors. First place for Best Magazine, General Interest Article, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Black Market Wildlife. And the final category of the evening is for the All Around Magazine. And this award recognizes excellence in graphic design and editorial content for a state conservation magazine. And the winners this year for the best magazine in the United States are... Third place for best magazine, Ohio Division of Wildlife, Wild Ohio Magazine. Second place, Arizona Game and Fish Commission, Arizona Wildlife Views. First place for Best Magazine, South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, South Carolina Wildlife. We have one last award that we're going to give, and that's the Spirit of ACI. Um, the Spirit of ACI has been given since 1988, and it's uh, the the president gets the privilege to give this award to somebody that has really shown um, service and um, leadership in this organization. So. Um, it's been given every year since 1988 except for three years and I certainly didn't want to skip this year with everything that's going on because there's a lot of ACI spirit out there. Um, Blake has certainly uh, taken the torch from last year and uh, taken the torch in stride. Um, we've done a lot of different things this year, taking, uh, to having to cancel the whole conference and then doing this virtual award ceremony and I hope everybody's really enjoyed that. Um, but, you know, we, when I think of the people that have embodied the Spirit of ACI Awards over the years, there's, there's some greats in here. We've got Don King, we've got Scott, Stephanie, Micah, the great Kay Ellerhoff, Judy, we've got Blake, of course. Um, I don't know how Lance didn't make it into that picture, but we've got Lance. And then there's some others, Kim Nix, wonderful Kim Nix, Michael Gray, um, so, and Julie. And so I just really wanted to 
everybody to recognize the group of people that, that this award's been given to. And uh, I was, of course, lucky enough to be recognized with it a couple of years ago. And we get to pass this big plaque around. So Blake will be mailing that to the recipient this year. Um, and, you know, I was looking at the list of people that had won and the states that had won. And I'll give you one guess as to the state that has won it the most times. It kind of mirrors the regular ACI awards. Anybody got a guess? You're right, it's Texas. <laughs> so Texas has won a, a Spirit Award five times and Oklahoma four times. And this year, I'd like to talk about Nevada. Uh, a guy I know taught me how to say that right. Um, so in 2002, Jeff Schneider won the Spirit Award, and in 1995, David Rice won it. And this year, I'd like to add another Nevadan to that list. Um, Aaron Meyer, who has uh, definitely shown his spirit over the last few years. Uh, so glad to be able to recognize him. You know, I don't know if everybody's aware, but <laughs> several years ago, we had a state to drop out of being able to host the conference. And with it just eight months to plan a whole conference, uh, Aaron put on a conference that was just one of the best ever in Lake Tahoe. And I hope uh, everybody remembers what a wonderful conference that was. And he pretty much did that single-handedly. And I think after the conference, he looked to something like this. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, Aaron's been a recipient of many ACI awards over the years. Um, he's also helped um, getting auction items. He's been a category chair for judging for dozens of years, I feel like. And uh, he's helped with, um, gosh, so many things. He's been on the board for several years. He's um, been the... Uh, Let's see, what else is on the list? Oh, okay. Yeah, recently he's also taken on the responsibility of being co-chair for the auction, and that's a huge responsibility. Um, he's also got a wonderful sense of humor. Uh, this is one of his uh, little memes that he put up on um, the deadline for his quota hunt for May 4th. Ne never let, tell me the odds. May the 4th be with you. A uh, little, little Star Trek humor. Um, you know, this year he was also uh, recognized as the Boating Educator of the Year, and he had to accept that award virtually, so hopefully he's got some practice at doing that. And Aaron, I hope you're sitting with these folks tonight and uh, getting uh, honored like this. I, I just um, am so glad to be able to give you this, and um, you'll be receiving your plaques in the mail soon. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you get to be among this great group of people, and, you know, that's that's quite the honor. And uh, I know you probably have a lot to say about this, and we'd love to hear about that in the social hour after all of this is over. So again, I hope everybody's had a wonderful night and enjoy everything and join us in the social hour. Night, night, <laughs> as Joe Liz would say. Well, that concludes tonight's presentation. I truly do hope you enjoyed tonight's show. I want to say thank you to everyone who was involved with the ACI Awards and congratulations to all the winners. Just a quick reminder that we do have the Zoom call immediately following, so I can't wait to see everyone and talk to some of my, my favorite friends across ACI. So once again, thanks for watching, and this concludes the ACI Awards. Thank you for watching the ACI Awards. Thank mm -hmm. you.